Now, when you log in to your OpenAI account, you'll now see an option of launching MATLAB GPT. The MathWorks collaborated with OpenAI in developing a dedicated cheap GPT that specializes in MATLAB related queries. When you submit a query using MATLAB GPT, the MathWorks website is used to enhance the standard chat GPT response so that the, the latest features and functions are always cited in the final response. Let's take a, a look at a specific usage scenario of MATLAB GPT. Say you have a problem statement for an old assignment that you used last year. The problem statement is defined in a PDF document. Let's look at how MATLAB GPT can help you create a brand new assignment, a new assignment that has similar learning outcomes to last year's assignment. Now, when we engage with MATLAB GPT, we'll go through a series of steps. We'll present a query, MATLAB GPT will respond, we'll review the generated output, and then we'll continue the conversation by asking MATLAB GPT to improve and extend its response. And eventually, we'll copy the code that's produced by MATLAB GPT and we'll paste it into MATLAB and we'll test it. So here's our starting point. This year's assignment focused on applying vibration suppression techniques, a design task that you'd typically encounter in say an industrial setting. We have an induction motor driving a pump and this combination is vibrating excessively. Last year, we asked the students to design a vibration absorber to attenuate these vibrations. We asked the students to derive the mechanical equations of motion, convert them into state space form, and then solve them using MATLAB's ODE solvers. We also asked them to plot the frequency response function for the brand new system. Now let's chat with MATLAB GPT and create a brand new assignment. So MATLAB GPT has a query submission box that we can interact with. And in the submission box, we'll first upload our PDF document that defines last year's problem. And then we'll tell MATLAB GPT that we want a different problem description that has similar learning outcomes as the one defined in the PDF file. We'll give it some hints along the way. Uh, perhaps a tuned mass damper might be the way to go. And we'll sort of specify that we'd like to keep the problem at, or at the two degree of freedom level of complexity. Now, when we submit this chat, MATLAB GPT produces a response. And here's that response. So it's created almost exactly what we asked for. We have a two degree of freedom system focused on the design of a tuned mass damper for a skyscraper. We're asking the students to apply Newton's second law, to convert the state space, and to use MATLAB's ODE solvers. In fact, this problem statement that MATLAB GPT generated was so good that my second chat is going to cut straight to the chase. I'm going to ask MATLAB GPT to produce the MATLAB code for this problem description. And here's the code that MATLAB GPT automatically generated. Let's review it and see how it stands up. The commentary at the start of the code starts well, reminding us that we're about to design a tuned mass damper. But its first wobble is that apparently has defined the mass and stiffness values for the tuned mass damper right from the get go which is a little bit silly because we're supposed to uh, compute these values using a design process. As we scroll further down the automatically produced code, we see straight up rubbish. The Newtonian equations of motion that are in this comment block are just wrong, which is really strange because the mass damping and stiffness matrices defined by the MATLAB expressions 
are actually correct. Scrolling further down the, the generated code, we again find errors in the commentary. Here, the ordering of the state vector in state space form is just wrong. But again, the MATLAB code implementation is correct. And it also correctly formulates how to use MATLAB's ODE solvers. And finally, it also has the correct code for producing um, uh, transient time domain response plots and the Bode plot of the system. So look, for the most part, not bad, but we certainly need to continue the conversation in order to correct some of these, uh, these failings. So our third chat, we state that the code needs to be modified so that it shows the design calculations for actually computing the mass and stiffness for the tuned mass damper. And MATLAB GPT responds with a classic design formula for a vibration attenuation problem, which is very, very nice. And as I sort of skimmed further down the code, uh, something else sort of stood out. Um, the, uh, the definition of the excitation force that we're going to be stimulating this skyscraper with has some random excitation frequency. It shouldn't be that. It should be at a frequency that corresponds to the primary structure's resonance. So let's again talk to uh, MATLAB GPT and see if we can rectify that. So in our next chat, we make it clear that the forcing frequency that we're going to subject the building to should correspond to that primary structural resonant frequency. And MATLAB GPT's response is bang on the money. So look, in MATLAB GPT, I think we're ready now to sort of copy the automatically generated code that it's produced and push it into MATLAB so that we can start to explore it even further. So let me sort of show you what that workflow process sort of looks like. So within MATLAB GPT, um, there's a nice link called copy code. And as its name suggests, you can click on it and it will copy uh, all of the code that MATLAB GPT is created. We'll go to MATLAB desktop and we'll open ourselves a brand new script and we'll paste in the code produced by MATLAB GPT. And from here, we'll do some very, very minor edits. I'm going to sort of uh, overwrite uh, the damping values for the primary structure and also the tune mass damper. These are very minor, minor sort of uh, corrections. And the second one for, for the tune mass damper. I'm going to scroll down and the next sort of change that I'm going to make to, to this generated code is I'm going to delete the erroneous commentary. Um, I'm so shocked that uh, it got that wrong, but let's delete those comments. And the final sort of edit that I'm going to make is I'm just going to increase the magnitude of the excitation force that we, we're going to subject our building to. And that's it. So along the way, I've been re reviewing the code and I, I think that it's time to run it. Yep, we're able to run the code and here's the uh, transient response of the primary structure. We're seeing um, vibration displacements of the order of plus or minus five centimeters. So as part of my ongoing efforts to sort of, you know, confirm that the, that the code seems right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to um, implement a really bad design for a tuned mass damper. So the rationale here is that when I now run the code with this bad design, we should see significantly uh, larger displacements uh, when we sort of solve those ODEs in MATLAB. And as I sort of scroll down, bang, now our skyscrapers sort of, you know, moving backwards and forwards of the order of plus or minus 30 centimeters. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy with this. And all up, that's been a really productive 20 minutes of my life. We've got a really good starting point for a brand new assignment that we can roll out to this year's class.